Okay, so this work uh, is in collaboration with Federico Stasisin. I have done this uh, work during my postdoc at uh, IATE. Uh, it was a very nice time, so I'm very happy to present or to try to present this work here in this in this conference. So the motivation of stocks we know fields uh, in our universe in, at any scales uh, from planets and stars to large scale uh, structures as galaxy and galaxy clusters. There are observations that build uh, the strength or the magnitude of these magnetic fields in cosmic voids, for example, and in filaments of around 10 to the minus 16 or 10 to the minus uh, 15 gauss with some uh, correlation length of tens uh, to kiloparsecs, uh, 10 kiloparsecs in, in galaxy clusters. So one of the questions uh, we have regarding this is which is the origin of these large scale magnetic fields? Uh, there are basically two ways uh, to try to understand these origins. One is from the astrophysical scenario in which it's proposed a seed field, uh, very weak from um, origin from local sources and then uh, amplified or regenerated to larger scales, probably with some dynamo um, action. The other way is the primordial um, hypothesis in which seed fields have been generated uh, fairly in the early universe, of course, before uh, the structure formation epoch. So this uh, hypothesis is uh, quite like, favored from uh, observation of plasters spectra by the, for example, the Fermi Gamma Ray Observatory, uh, which they report exactly the order of magnitude I mentioned before, this 10 to the minus 16 Gauss. Um, here I'm showing some, some nice plots of uh, magnetic field uh, distribution with different uh, MHD cosmological simulation. In particular, there are three different ones. On top, on the left, I'm showing uh, with uh, SPH simulation with uh, galactic seeding. This is based with some uh, methodology that has been developed by Federico and collaborators. Um, also, there are some uh, other simulations using this ENC uh, CTO MHD simulation. Um, there is other uh, code uh, use the ng uh, methods. Uh, also showing here a plot, a plot regard uh, relating magnetic structure with over density. So this is done for the pH in particular, starting from the three different seeds. Uh, you can see the relation between the field and the over density field is quite linear, at least in, at some uh, region. So another question. Um, how these large scale magnetic fields uh, are amplified if this, whether or not these magnetic fields are regenerating, re regenerated, sorry, and under which mechanism. Uh, also, if the same amplification mechanism holds at any scales or there are different mechanisms and at which time scales. So, in order to answer some of this question, it's very popular the dynamo theory, which bases on MAT, magnetohydrodynamics. In of magnetic field amplification, in particular, uh, the importance of the induction equation, uh, such that with uh, an electromotic force that can uh, make this uh, magnetic field uh, to increase and regenerate during evolution. For example, in the non-ideal, in non-ideal magnetohydrodynamic, we get uh, this um, induction showing here this trivial consequence of magnetic equation and uh, the Ohm's law, in particular, with uh, if you consider a finite conductivity system, um, you get this second term proportional to mag the magnetic field. Uh, um, we will consider um, the equation and we will study the, the equations in, first in the kinematic regime, in which we evolve the magnetic field, but uh, we don't evolve a priori the fluid dynamics. We assume that there is a background fluid uh, and we just uh, use this background fluid in order to evolve uh, the magnetic field. So during last, uh, the last uh, years, there have been some generalization of this equation in order to see if some other, some new models, dynamo um, system can be taken into account in order to explain the, the amplification of magnetic fields. In particular, uh, there is a mean field, uh, MHD, which two different scales are present. Uh, one is a slowly varying component on some large characteristic scale, it depends on the problem, 
And the second scale is, is a wrap, it's a uh, faster uh, fluctuating components on some smaller scale. And we are interested to evolve uh, the magnetic fields of, uh, using this generalized induction equation uh, in an intermediate region. So basically this um, generalized induction equation takes into account the first term, this is the ideal MAZ, plus the curl of some electromotive force that uh, in the most general way, it can be written as a series of uh, the magnetic field uh, strength and also spatial derivative of it, uh, which are weighted by some coefficients. Uh, people usually in astrophysics choice um, these uh, coefficients to be uh, fairly homogeneous, just depend on one or two scholars. For example, for galactic dynamos, uh, there are some works in which people directly consider the simplest of this um, electromagnetic force, uh, one that is linear with uh, the magnetic field and no um, derivatives of the magnetic field contribution are present in this, in this simplest choice. And people usually take into account this in order just to analyze the alpha effect and they report magnetic field amplification. But our, the question we have uh, with Fede is what does it mean? What, what does it mean if, if we take this um, magnetic induction equation at this, at this very simplest in this very simplest rendition, when the electromotive force is linear in the magnetic field, uh, because it is easy in general, looking on the mathematical properties of the equation to um, find rendition of this dynamo uh, equation that um, gives some magnetic mode that can increase and uh, also with, without bound in time, um, but without any physical leaning and the, 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 the reason for, for which these uh, magnetic uh, modes are increasing are just because of bad properties, bad mathematical properties of the equations. So our work uh, is, um, the idea of our work is try to analyze some mathematical properties of this generalized induction equation uh, in way of the world. That's a very important tool uh, we need to take into account where considering theories for evolving any physical system. So the, the, the very basic idea on well postness is um, Hadamar, uh, the early 90s, uh, say that the system of equation is well post, we call it well post, if uh, a solution exists, the solution is unique, at least local in time, and it changes continually with uh, initial data. So the importance of well postness in, in any uh, system of equations uh, aiming to describe some physics uh, is that it guarantees the predictability of the theory. That is crucial in order to predict what's going on with the system, uh, starting from some initial condition. The idea uh, is to control this, uh, the, the solution in time, uh, somehow with uh, the, the, the initial data. Uh, the problem is that uh, mathematically it's very difficult to uh, prove well poseness uh, in a very general way. But uh, fortunately for first order system of equations, there is an algebraic characterization in order to um, assess the world postness, which is called hyperbolicity. And basically says that if we take the principal part of this equation, that is a part containing the highest order derivatives, uh, if this principal part turns out to be diagonally same with real eigenvalues, we can that we can guarantee the world postness of the theory. And um, in particular, uh, theory to be uh, the possible to be able to, to predict what's going on in a unique way and in a, sh in a, in a safe way, um, what, what, what will we be going on with, in, with our system. So basically we um, got into the details of uh, the well potence of our system. We started with very, very simplest case in which we consider all the coefficients of this expansion I showed you before equal to zero, except of the first term, so we have this uh, rendition for the induction equation uh, by proposing these plane wave solutions um, that always call magnetic modes and plugging them into a solution to get a subsidiary system that looks as I'm showing here. So this V1, V2, V3 are the general component of the magnetic fields. And uh, in order this system to get a non-trivial solution, we need to require this matrix to have a determinant equal to zero. This uh, led to a dispersion relation. We have in this case three uh, solution, but if we take, for example, the mode that goes with sigma minus, we can see that there is an exponential uh, with a positive um, power. 
depending on the frequency of this plane wave, that is obviously uh, not possible to bound it uh, only with the initial data if we then want to take a Fourier um, decomposition, for example, of, of, of an arbitrary initial data. This mode will always appear and uh, it, we cannot bound the evolution of, in particular, this mode only with the initial data. So uh, this theory up to this order for the electromotic field um, is not suitable for described physics, for described physics uh, amplification of the magnetic field, even we can find some modes uh, that grow um, in a happy way, but they are just because of bad uh, mathematical properties of our theory. For completeness, uh, for completeness then we also analyze the system, um, adding the data contribution to the electromotive force that is considering uh, derivatives, also on the, the spatial derivative of the magnetic fields in the electromotive force. In this case, the subsidiary system looks like this. Uh, the dispersion, the corresponding dispersion relation has also uh, three solutions, but uh, the, good, the good news is that now all the modes are uh, bounded, so uh, this, is, this theory seems to be adequate for explaining um, magnetic field amplification or uh, re uh, re regeneration. So let me just um, give you some application of this uh, well-posed case in which uh, Vita is different from zero. Uh, in particular, uh, the idea is to use uh, the helicity, that basically decomposing the magnetic field as the curl of some vector potential. We can define uh, the helicity as uh, the inner product between the vector potential and the magnetic fields. And as always, the energy of the system is just the integral of the square of, um, of the magnetic field. So this helicity has a nice property if you consider, uh, okay. if you take the derivative, yes, yes, I'm just finishing. Uh, you can just write this um, derivative in terms of, of these two terms, and um, it, it's possible to use uh, this um, relation of the helicity for, for example, um, try to find a bound for the magnetic energy for some particular, for any uh, system. In particular, in this case, we consider the non-relativistic for free, in which uh, the curl of the magnetic field is goes along the magnetic field itself, and well, just by computing some integrals in a nice way, we can uh, arrive to this bound for um, the, the, the magnetic energy, and we can see that um, a necessary condition in order the, the electromagnetic energy uh, to, to grow is uh, to take the maximum of this alpha uh, here, that is a function of, of, uh, of, spe of space, to be greater than this product of uh, beta and gamma. So we know that beta must be um, greater to zero, for example, but in the first three case, uh, it cannot be arbitrary. We need we have this uh, bound uh, also for, for the beta. So just in order to conclude, uh, with the idea is to contribute to the understanding of magnetic field amplification through uh, these dynamo models. The idea is to continue working and in particular study some velocity uh, profiles or geometries which um, are in favor of magnetic field amplification, of, of course, starting from a, from a well-posed and stable theory. Uh, also, we would like to explore how hyperbolicity changes when including um, terms in which time derivative of the magnetic fields also appears. It would change uh, dramatically the, the principal part of the system, so it's, it's worth to, to study that and also uh, to con perform some numerical simulations and probably the, 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 the issue of, of finding velocity profiles uh, turns out to be probably difficult uh, from, the from a theoretical framework. So numerical simulation will also be super useful in order to, to try to explore this, these velocity profiles, uh, which are hopefully compatible with some uh, magnetic energy growth as well. So thank you very much and sorry for the convening. Thank you, Marcelo. Hello, uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, the question okay. is, do you have any, yes, uh, do you have any, or there is any, is there any realistic uh, constraint in the free parameters of your higher order electromagnetic theory from laboratory observations? Uh, well, 
Yes, there are. Um, there is a nice review by Withrow uh, in which they consider um, some restrictions, or for example, for these alpha or beta parameters. Um, it depends on the model and, and on the scales you are going to work. But yes, there are. There are. Um, it depends on the also on, on the geometry of uh, which geometry uh, um, you propose uh, for 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 your model. Um, yeah, but but yes, yes, you can you can find. Can some. Okay, and so, which would be the the key um, physical experiment when when you need the arising of this higher order electromagnetic theory? Uh, is there any, let's say, key experiment where these new physics should arise? Um, yeah, that, 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 that's, that, that's a good point. I think that's uh, mostly related with, with um, how these magnetic fields were observed. Um, people usually get back to, to, the, to the very basic uh, physics on, on, on dynamos. We know that, that uh, the, the physics of dynamos are, are present in the, in the MHD equation. And the dynamo, the dynamo equation is one rendition of it. Um, but unfortunately, at, until now, it's uh, not possible to, to have a, a complete theory for, for, for understanding in, in, an, in a perfect way uh, how these magnetic fields uh, evolve and regenerate. Um, so yeah, I, I, would, I, I would say that, that uh, going through the very basics of the dynamo um, leads one to, to, the, to, to the MHD induction equation. Um, but regarding the induction equation, uh, yeah, probably higher order, for example, second order derivatives of, of magnetic fields, these gamma coefficients are like non constrained to. So probably some of the pieces, could, the six of the problem could, could be could be missing or could be yet um, have yet to be to be explored. So it's an open window. People just. Uh, very basic models uh, are probably not uh, enough in order to explain this. Uh, just go to and, and, and uh, explore some other uh, contribution of this uh, for, for this generalized dynamo, dynamo system. Okay, if there are no more questions, we thanks to the speakers today, to the public, the real and the virtual one, and the people behind the scenes. Thank you so much. Enjoy the lunch.